chairpersons, my friend Beverly Whipple, Dr. Narayan Reddy, and my learned colleagues. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be among you today. And I thank you, Dr. Jubani, for your generous introduction, and you, ladies and gentlemen, for endorsing that. The topic on which I intend to focus my professional attention is uh, sexual concerns, a drug-free anti-anxiety approach. It all started after opening the Department of Sexual Medicine at KEM Hospital. To begin with, the OPD was just about three or four patients, and it swelled to about 150 patients a few decades ago. Well, <clears throat> initially we started with Masters and Johnson's model then switched over to Hartman and Fithian's model. Then we tried even Helen Kaplan's model. But we found that these models were too vague and not suitable for our setup. We had to develop a new model. And we did develop that model, which we found is very effective. It has been tried on more than 55,000 cases at KEM hospital alone. You can diagnose a case in a very short time as if you are diagnosing a respiratory problem or a gastrointestinal problem. We usually ask just four questions to the male and four questions to the female. We ask desire, erection, penetration, and orgasm to the male, and desire, lubrication, penetration, and orgasm to the female. Usually, we come to the diagnosis very effectively in a very, very short time. Well, past history, personal history, is asked only when it is relevant. But at the end, we do ask these two questions. There is there's anything else which I have not asked, but you would like to tell me. And the second one, what do you attribute your problem to? And take my word, eight out of ten patients would report to the previous habit of masturbation, the value of semen, the penis size, my wife didn't bleed on the first night. Oh, I don't get that I mean, erection that often or that fast. Any case, even if the problem is erectile problem or orgasmic problem. You see, sexual concerns, unless they are attended to well, the anxiety will prevail. And in my opinion, if the anxiety is there, the happiness won't be there. Because sexual pleasure is not a performance to be gauged. It's a pleasure, or more correctly, happiness to be shared between two individuals. And if at all you want to be happy, you can't be anxious. Because it's difficult for an individual to be anxious and sensuous at the same time. So even if you treat erectile dysfunction, or an or, orgasmic problem, the sexual concern leading to anxiety usually prevails. Well, any case which we see, whether the problem is psychological or organic, situational or constitutional, there is one thing in common, that there is anxiety over a sexual situation, which is usually brought about by the negative feelings, which gets into conflict with the experience of failure, the failure recurs, anxiety increases, and a vicious cycle gets set up in which hostility, shame, guilt, and fear become the part of the pattern for any potency problem. Now, in the process, uh, 
uh, me and my colleagues developed 10 basic slides. I love photographs. The photography and sex both develop in dark. <laughs> and in both you need to click. Well, we develop about 10 slides. And in those 10 slides, we are able to clear the myths and misconceptions which we all have. Because as the previous judge mentioned that there is no sex education in the country, even the subjects of psychopathology and psychophysiology of sex and sex dysfunctions are not taught at all to the medical students. And the majority of the psychiatric residences are grossly negligent in this. The tragic result is we all have myths and misconceptions. We are loaded with that. So in this 10 slide, we clear the myths and misconceptions, offer them adequate knowledge of sex and sexuality, to combat sex anxiety. Patient understands that my doctor has understood the problem. Hence, he will be able to cure it. He will be able to treat me. So there is a positive transference. I would like to share this 10 slide and also show you, talk about the concerns and how we handle by this drug-free anti-anxiety approach. Simple. Well, this is the picture of the private part, the male. We all know that either by the sight, order, taste or touch, there is a sex center in the brain. When aroused, the messages are relayed down. When the message is sufficient, the further messages go down, there is flow of blood in the entire body. In the private part, it will be more. And as a result, a man gets erection. Here, if a man gets erection in one set of circumstances and not in the other, if he gets in the early morning, if he gets during masturbation, if he gets with one partner but not at the time of coitus, then the problem is situational and not a constitutional. You are dealing with a psychological problem and not organic. How do you convince your client? I simply give an example. If I have a hand like this, if I chop it off from here, if it falls on the ground, even if I raise my arm ten times, my forearm will not be raised even once. And if it is raised once, you will refuse to believe that my hand was detached. Similarly, I use the word masturbation. What do you think? Is masturbation beneficial or harmful? Normal? Everyone says it's normal. But just to tell a patient that masturbation is normal is not enough. I must tell you, in my experience, when I inaugurated the Department of Sexual Medicine after coming from Masters and Johnson, uh, attending the workshop, I used to give a talk. What is masturbation? There is no other activity which has been so roundly condemned, so frequently discussed, and yet so universally practiced than masturbation. Masturbation is beneficial. It's not harmful. It's one way by which one can avoid unwanted pregnancies and sexually transmitted diseases. And in my opinion, if masturbation were to be suppressed, the cases of crimes against morality would enormously increase. But, take my words, KM was a free hospital. After four sessions, they would come back. Doc, you gave a beautiful talk, but the guilt still remains. It still remains. Do something for that. Then I thought that I have to change my modus operandi. And I did change. And believe me, after that, I have yet to come across a case of recurrence with the guilt of masturbation. I would explain to them, Oh Guru, is masturbation normal? If I were the Guru, I would say normal as normal as sexual intercourse. Because during intercourse, what the penis does in a woman's vagina, it does the same in the folded palm during masturbation. Meaning thereby, if you know English well, you can pick up French faster because of the same script. But what about excess, doctor? There's nothing like excess in masturbation or sex leading to weakening of the penis because the tongue does not become weak in a talkative person. Neither does it become strong if one observes silence. I'm sorry, we are missing the judge. Many people have got this idea that Masturbation leads to curvature. Well, explain to the patient that little curvature is a normal phenomenon. 
There's nobody on the earth who has got penis at 90 degree angle. Little on the left or on the right, the penetration would be straight, little upward or downward. Does not affect the penetration. While breaking in through a window, one could be a little to the left or to the right. It makes the least difference in entering. The result is one gets in. Please remember, having said this, you must know, if at all, patient complains of pain at the time of penetration. You must realize what conditions can lead to this. If there is an evidence of congenital configuration of the corpora cavernosa, if there is abnormality of the investing or bux fascia, and the most common pyron is received, the curvature could be extreme and needs to be attended. But unless it causes pain at the time of penetration, I won't touch. This is a cross section of the flaccid penis. And the concerns I clear in this slide is psychological and organic erectile dysfunction. Talk about masturbation and talk about curvature. This is the cross section of the flaccid penis and the cross section of the erect penis. Everything depends upon flow of blood. Simple, if there are two tubes of the similar diameter, from one water is flowing, another honey, which one will flow fast? That means any condition which thickens the blood or narrows the blood vessels can lead to problem of erection. Remember one thing, what is important is not what you know, how much you can convey. So what causes this? Any evidence of atherosclerosis, you see? Serum lipids, sugar, smoking. So these, these three S's are not good for the big S, that is sex. <coughs> Once again, you can emphasize the fact that, look, there are no striated muscles in the penis. So question of weakness does not arise. There is no bone. Fracture cannot occur. Period. Then we talk about the male genital apparatus. As you can see the penis, the two testicles. Right above that is the prostate gland and the bladder sitting on the top. There are two varieties of cells in the testes. One secret hormone which we all know, second produces sperms, which traverses via the sperm duct, comes out as semen. Myths about semen are many in our country, Margaret. Many. Semen is vital and therefore should be conserved, is a misconception. Conservation of semen is essential for robust health and athletic excellence, is another misconception. One drop of semen equals to 100 drops of blood and one drop of blood equal to so much of food is a third misconception. We all know that there are two varieties of cells in the testes. One secret hormone which goes in the blood. Because of that you get moustache, beard, hair from the chest, hair from the axilla, hair from the pubic region and desire for that. Second, here, please remember. This is the testosterone hormone. Second produces sperms, which traverses via the sperm duct, goes out as semen. Please remember, never advise a semen examination in a case of erectile dysfunction. Because sterility and virility are two entirely different things, depend upon the different types of cells present in the testes. A presence or absence of sperms has nothing to do with sexuality of an individual. Please remember that. Moreover, even you can promote here about vasectomy. In vasectomy, they chop off the vas. But even after that, the quantity of semen remains the same. So emphasize the fact that following vasectomy, the erection, the quality of orgasm, the pleasure at the time of orgasm, and the quantity of semen remains Almost, almost the same. The reason 99.9% .9 of the seminal fluid is constituted by the seminal vesicles and 0.1% is constituted by the sperm. Please remember that. Volume of semen as a man grows older, the color may change from white to light yellow, the consistency gets thinned out, and the quantity may reduce, but please remember, in a young individual up to the age of 45, 
volume of semen can give you a lot of information if i if you ask me i don't send my patients for testosterone estimation because of the tremendous diurnal variation you need to have a full sample for that i ask them about the quantity of semen if with the same partner and the period between two orgasm are constant and if the quantity is reduced markedly suspect testosterone deficiency because 99.9% of the fluid comes from seminal vesicles and the prostate which is dependent totally upon testosterone indirect information about testosterone you must remember one thing even viagra will not work that good if the testosterone is less so if a patient says doc my quantity of reduced has reduced suspect testosterone deficiency increase the testosterone level best by diet which diet contains high testosterone black grams urad ka dal and fenugreek methi if it doesn't work you can choose testosterone undeconate my choice would be that either injectable or gel form usually it works well mind you see that he is not taking any other drug alpha blockers used for the prostate as well as carbamazepine can reduce the quantity of semen almost to zero just keep this at the back of mind 24 by 7 this is being manufactured if you don't remove it it will go by itself i give simple example jim i just tell them if there's a glass full of water and if you add more water to it what happens it overflows similarly i would tell if you don't indulge in intercourse or masturbation it will come out as sleep emission which is normal physiological and not pathological you don't need to consult a doctor for this there are plenty of medicines available to treat this in asia it is not required at all because we also have a concept of brahmacharya the holding of the semen gives you a better light and takes you to the higher stages of life etc actually the meaning of brahmacharya is not holding the semen the real meaning of brahmacharya is the brahma means soul and charya means in search of atma ki shodh that is brahmacharya not holding semen no one can hold semen can you hold urine for more than a day no how can you hold semen this is a waste product it being manufactured for being excreted and not for being stored up no man can store it so only thing seminal vesicles i mean three permissions are normal physiological and not pathological and only thing true about brahmacharya is brahmacharya is not hereditary celibacy is not hereditary i hope you get the meaning out of it well these are the things which i would clear in this slide vitality brahmacharya consistency color quantity the testosterone and the volume of semen and vasectomy well sometimes a patient gets around a drop or two comes out this is a cowper's gland fluid there are many religious sects here in jains as well as in mohammedans you see patient feels that he has ejaculated so they to go they have to take bath i have come across some molvis taking and some jain monks taking eight or 10 times bath i have to explain to them that this is not semen ask them patient will come doctor i ejaculate very often ask them whether the semen is oozing out or if it is squirting out if it is oozing out suspect cowper's gland fluid squirting out semen cowper's gland fluid few drops semen it will be anywhere from 2 to 5 ml please remember this so i mean if you see a sweet you get a salivation in the mouth similarly if you are aroused i mean if you see a beautiful desired object of your choice you might get a salivation here so this is not something which needs to be treated it just you need to explain to them sometimes which is very common in our country is dhatu syndrome what happens is 
whenever they go and sit on the toilet seat, they pass a little white substance like semen. It is nothing but urethral gland fluid and little bit of prosthetic fluid. Mind you, semen and urine can never mix. Unless the urinary door closes, the semen will never, the semen will never come out. Am I clear? But this problem you will not find in America or England or Australia. This problem you will find in Hindustan, Pakistan, Baluchistan, Afghanistan, Turkistan, etc. Why? If you ask me, I have done original research in orgasm. I was the person who found out who was Vatsayana, which place he belonged to and when, who, he wrote Kama Sutra, on which government gave me Padma Shri. But, my best research which helped my countrymen is this. This problem in our country is because of our own toilet habits. Abroad, they sit on a commode seat, so they look straight. In our country, they, there is a squatting type, so they three. Jo dekha, fas gaya. Jo nahi dekha, wo bach gaya. You see, what I wanted to tell you is that what the eyes do not see, the mind does not know. That's why this problem is an organ. You don't require any medication whatsoever. This is a female, either by the sight, order, taste or touch. There is a sex sense. I mean, the first picture is a woman who has never had sexual intercourse. The second who has had sexual intercourse, so she doesn't have hymen. Third, who has not had sexual intercourse, and yet she doesn't have hymen. What I want to tell you is that hymen is not the test of virginity. A woman need not bleed at the first attempt at sexual intercourse. As this is the frontal view of the female genitalia. And this is the cross section of the lateral view. The outer lips, the clitoris, the urethra, the vagina, the anus. Please remember one thing. There are many people who do not have any idea whatsoever about the anatomy. Don't take anything for granted. Make it very clear that there are three orifices. Urethra, vagina and anus. Many people on the first night when they do first time, they are doubtful whether it has gone at a proper place or not. Explain to them in premarital counseling. The urethra is too small, a finger cannot go. Anus is too low, not possible from a direct contact. Only place where it goes is vagina. Still the patient is anxious, tell him. Whenever you get a hard on, give it to your partner. Why? Because she knows where it goes. In dark I can put in my mouth. If I try to put in your mouth, I could be all over the place. So she knows her anatomy better. Simple thing, but it's effective. Second thing, uh, in females, the sensitive area is outside and just outer one third of vagina. Inner two third is virtually insensitive. So we live in the era of time management. So you can advise your patient to, if you want to arouse your par partner, concentrate on the area of maximum nerve ending that is outside and outer one third, not to waste time inside. The normal sexual length of vagina is six inches. Only outer one third has sensation. This is the frontal view of the female genitalia. Cross section of the lateral view. Vagina is the common passage for intercourse, birth and menstruation. Maximum sensations are outside and outer third of vagina. These are the two conclusions that if you want to arouse your partner, concentrate outside and outer third of vagina. Second, the size of the penis for adequate female sexual gratification could be anything from two inches or more. Now I was writing columns for some popular magazines. I was writing columns for some popular magazines. Like in, in, in the country and there was a question which was asked to me. The doctor, I am a rich diamond merchant. I am getting married in the next month and I want to increase my penis size instantly. I am prepared to spend any amount. I did explain to this, but once again he wrote the same question. I want to increase instantly. 
prepared to spend any amount. I am a rich diamond merchant. I wrote in the advice, gentlemen, the magnifying glass which you are using to sort out the diamonds, kindly use the same as and when you want to have that feeling. <laughs> well, with a caution which Dr. Narayan Reddy told me, that, see that he doesn't use in the direct sunlight. <laughs> well, <laughs> here we clear the area of arousal in the penis side. The female, how, what happens either by the sight or the taste or touch, there is a sex center in the brain. When aroused, the messages go down, there is flow of blood and a woman gets wet. But sometimes, what happens, a woman has element of fear that what will happen? Her friends have told her something. So she's suffering from vaginismus. Vaginismus is a condition where a woman gets tremendous spasm in the outer one third of vagina just at the entry of the penis, which are involuntary spasms. So here, what I want to tell you is that this can be treated very well by supportive psychotherapy and behavior modification without giving any medication. But even in a case of erectile dysfunction, if you want to take him for the treatment, see that the female is examined first to rule out vaginismus and obstructive vaginal pathology. Am I clear, please? Second thing, whenever a woman is aroused, she reaches what is known as, she gets what is known as lubrication. This lubrication is sent person psychological in nature. If the woman is not interested in the sex act, she may not lubricate. And most Indian men don't devote enough time in the foreplay. They must realize that there is always more pleasure in traveling rather than arriving. Jo maza safar mein hai, wo manzil mein nahi hai. And what happens is, what are the other reasons why a woman may not lubricate? Two things keep at the back of your mind. If there is local vaginal infection, the infection, I mean the lubrication would be hampered, or if there is any endocrine imbalance which we find in menopause. And when she is aroused further, she reaches what is known as orgasm. What happens when a, or, at the time of orgasm? How much time do we enjoy orgasm? Anybody in the audience? Not more than half a minute per week, not more than half an hour per year, but still it's an important phenomena. The mathematics of misery and happiness chiefly depends upon this. And orgasm is important. Yes or no? Why? Otherwise people won't stop moving. <laughs> See? What happens when a woman reaches orgasm? What happens? In India we have to ask them. If a Gujarati woman comes, I have to ask them. Santosh Malyo. Punjabi. Tasalli, Marathi, Samadhan, Tamil, Trupti, Telugu, Santrupti, Kashmiri, Khushi, Malayalam, best word, Rati Murcha, English we call it orgasm. But how will you find out whether a woman has reached orgasm or not? One question, did you get the feeling of enough and nothing more? If she says yes, she had it. If not, one needs to try harder. Remember one thing, a woman is capable of multiple orgasms and a man is not. For a woman to be multi-orgasmic is an inbuilt thing, but for a man it's an acquired art. Second thing about, if at all a woman gets pain during intercourse, we call it dysperionia. Whether the pain in the beginning, pain in the middle or pain at the end. Pain in the beginning usually you know it very well. Lack of foreplay. At the end, pelvic inflammatory disease. And what about the middle? Any idea? Very common, but still ignored by most. Painful sexual intercourse at the middle. Anybody? Lack of lubrication. Sorry? Lack of lubrication. That is in the beginning. I am talking about the middle. Sorry? No. No. Vaginus was in the beginning. Position? No, don't lagao. 
Sorry? But then it's in the beginning. You are right, sir. Middle. Aake thoda pahunchne ke baad. Lack of arousal in the beginning. No, madam. No. Only question. Levator and I myalgia. Period. Very common but often ignored. Second is, the last one is orgasm. Orgasm, remember one thing, orgasm is experience between the two ears and not between the two legs. Unfortunately, the entire western world thinks that orgasm is between the two legs. You see, it's between the two ears. The feeling is here. And simple, orgasm could be early. Something like premature ejaculation. Same thing occurs in females also. Early orgasm, delayed orgasm. You reach orgasm but there is less pressure, impaired orgasm. And there is no feeling at all, Beverly, in your book, Absent Orgasm. Beverly has written a wonderful book on orgasm. In fact, she uh, had, uh, in the introduction, she gave my name, very kind of you. Similarly, in case of man, how? Either with a sight, order, taste, or touch, there is a sex center in the brain. When aroused, the messages go down. When the messages are sufficient, the further messages go down, there is flow of blood and a man gets erection. If the messages are less, a man may not get erection. If I am here, if I am with my partner, if I want to indulge, nobody is here, but the door is open. I can't. There is an element of fear, so messages are not enough. Sometimes, if there are more, you reach climax early. I would call it early orgasm. I won't use the word premature ejaculation. Because if you say premature ejaculation, what is mature ejaculation? Can ejaculation be mature or immature? Very funny. If there is a delay in reaching orgasm, what do you call? Retarded ejaculation. Can ejaculation be ever be retarded? Look in the dictionary. It's a retarded thought. Simple, delayed orgasm. In men, either you reach orgasm early, Either you reach with a delay, either you are impaired, or there is absent orgasm. Period. Very simple. What happens, this is the moment you say premature ejaculation. You are all scientists. At least don't propagate more myths. The moment you say premature ejaculation, you are propagating a myth that ejaculation and orgasm are synonymous. In reality, they are distinctly different and one could occur without the other. Moreover, what happens? If somebody is, pro, uh, is not ejaculating at all, if he is on carbamazepine or alpha blocker or he has, his prostate is removed and if he is reaching orgasm early, you will still call him premature ejaculation despite there is no ejaculation. It's a paradox. Funny. How as a doctor or a scientist you can use this? Early orgasm, delayed orgasm, impaired orgasm, absent orgasm. Orgasm is between the two ears and vaginal contractions in female and ejaculation. Men are between the two legs. Please remember that. Well, as a man grows older, there are certain changes which take place. He walks slow, he talks slow, but he expects that his erection should not be done. And moreover, he sees whether I am getting it on or getting it on. As a man grows older, erection will be slow. But if you focus the attention, he will not get proper erection. Why? Are you breathing now? Are you breathing now? Yes or no? Formerly you were not aware. Now you became aware. So you can't be anxious and sensuous at the same time. It's difficult. Second, please remember, occasional failures in sexual performance is normal. But please remember, failure does not mean an end. Failures are common. I give an example of Virat Kohli. He has two centuries in the first inning, gets bowled in zero in the second inning. That doesn't mean he can't play third inning. Emphasize the fact that failures are common. Failure does not mean an end. And remember one thing, sex has no expiry date. Sex after 60 is not possible, that view needs to be changed. In fact, it's better because there is enough affection, warmth and understanding after having spent a lifetime together. In fact, this could be the golden years of sexuality. 
instead of another thing about there are some men who are attracted towards the same sex my simple funda is if i like tea and if dr narayan did like like coffee fine we are born that way if i like tea he likes coffee and someone likes both <laughs> let's be an ism homosexual i mean heterosexuality homosexuality bisexuality it's so simple but our stand should be if a homosexual is satisfying his relationship in a positive way he is better off than not satisfying at all or being a destructive heterosexual instead of understanding this enjoying this people resort to change and they resort to what is known as sex tonic a belief in magic food and drugs to stimulate sex and sexuality is a delusion as old as human race almost every culture has attributed some parts of sexual arousal to some variety of food or drug which resemble very remotely like fellas like carrots or asparagus but it has been proved beyond doubt that there is no such food or drug available on the earth today which is directly sexually stimulating you see in fact they violate the basic principles of ayurveda ayurveda mentions that if you pluck a plant today the effect becomes zero after 6 months when no pharmaceutical company i have come across who writes when the plant was plucked so the manufacturing date and when it comes over the counter it takes a year how can it be said ayurvedic pensions very clearly that unless and until that gentleman stop it i'm talking ah huh. any difficulty what what was i talking ha ah, ayurvedic one see by another thing is that ayurveda clearly mentions that unless and until you know the physiology and pathology of an individual if you prescribe a medication it could be as dangerous like a snake bite or like a lightning or like a thunder so by and large in my opinion if a if a tablet is ayurvedic herbal tonic if a tablet is given it's a picture or a horse or a bull that works not the tablet if an injection is given it's a prick of the needle that works and not the contents of the syringe in one sentence if i have to sum up it's the exploitation of the desperate by the ignorant well most important thing is human understanding offering of the adequate sex knowledge are the most powerful remedies and the value of which tends to be neglected in this modern age in my opinion the increased application could obviate the majority of the use of tranquilizer or the so called sex tonic well friends much has been omitted in this talk that could have been included but it is fervently hoped that nothing has been included which ought to have been omitted i thank you